in some of my earliest videos, I went over key endgame situations every player should know. The first being how to win with two kings versus one king, and the other being how to win with three kings versus two kings when the two kings are in opposite corners. Today, I'm going to increase the pieces on each side and talk about how to win with four kings against three kings. I've discussed how it's best practice to keep your kings together whether in an attacking position or defending position. If you are attacking, you want to either separate your opponents or at least corral them to a part of the board. This position here is a common four kings versus three kings landing and one that can cause a lot of difficulty to execute without prior knowledge as it requires a pitch to win. So let's break it down. The key first move to winning in this position is to take this piece and move it to this square here. And what that does is it further restricts the mobility on this king right here. This king is now trapped. Mobility is something I talked about in previous videos and will continue to talk about it as it's a key component in checkers. So now, white is limited to moving just one of these two pieces right here. I'll talk about this move later on in this video. For now, let's look at what happens if white moves back. Red is going to move up here and what that does is it traps these two kings. White can no longer move this piece here and if it tries to move here, red is just going to trade off and trading off is the goal here for red. So instead, white is limited not just with one piece, but really one move. And that's moving here. Red is going to follow it. And white now has a choice of two moves. It can move out of the corner, but red is going to go into the corner and now this piece is completely trapped. It's going to get captured on its next move no matter what. So that's no good. Instead, white is going to move here. Now, another key critical move for red is moving this piece to this square. Now you may be thinking it looks like it's retreating and it's moving away from the position, but it's actually key to winning. So now, white has a choice of two moves on the board with just this one piece. It can move back, which is actually best, or it can move here. What happens if it moves there is red will come out of the double corner and almost freezing the entire board. It cannot move this piece. This piece is now completely trapped from all sides. So it really just has this move to move back. And again, red is going to press this king here. This king can now move here, cannot move here. Really, it can just move there. And if it does that, red is going to trade off and have an easy win. So instead of moving here, white will back in here. The next move for red is moving up to this position. We're getting very close to the ending now. If white comes out of the double corner, red can follow it up. And again, white is really just restricted to this one move here. And now red can stall by moving here. If white goes out of there, red can just move either one of these two pieces and again exchange. Same if white goes here, the exchange for red. And if white goes here, another exchange or red can just come up here and there's actually going to be a double jump. If white goes there, the double jump. Here, the double jump. And here, the double jump as well. So that's no good either. So instead, this is again the best move, and this is where the key pitch comes in. Red goes here next and sacrifices the piece. White captures. 
red moves here next, dooming this piece. If white goes anywhere else other than retreating, red's going to take the piece. If white goes here, red takes the piece. Here, red takes this piece or this piece, and here, red takes the piece. So instead, if it retreats backwards, red moves there, forcing the capture, the double jump, and the win. I talked about a variation in this ending as well. So let's start out again with the key move. And now instead of moving back here for white, white goes here instead. Red goes forward, and white cannot move here next because of the trade-off. So white must move further up here. Red goes into the corner. And I showed you in this position already, if red goes out here, if white goes here, it's actually the same as well. The pitch. I hope this quick demonstration of how to pull off the win will add to your endgame knowledge and you'll feel confident you have the tools going forward. I always recommend setting up these types of positions and playing them out. Repetition helps and will make it easier once you encounter these types of endings in your games. Thanks, as always, for watching.